Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Insights in Tech. I'm here with Edna Conway. Edna, please introduce yourself to our audience. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me, Shira. I'm delighted to, oh, as always, spend some time chatting with you. I'm Edna Conway, and I have the privilege of leading Microsoft's effort to drive security risk and compliance around its entire Azure platform. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. As you see, the world has been changing a lot over the last month with, with remote work and changes within the cybersecurity community and things growing in ways that we didn't even seem that would be possible. I wanted to talk to you about trustworthiness in the time of COVID-19. Can you give us a little insight into that, please? So, I, you know, that could be an entire book, as you know. Uh, I think there's some interesting things going on right now, though, when you think about what COVID is doing. One, it highlights something incredibly positive. How lucky are we to live in this day and age where, quite frankly, we can continue to communicate in the fashion that we are today, remotely using technology. The other thing it highlights is a recognition of the interconnectedness of the world's global supply chains. And it brings it home, unfortunately, in some remarkably negative ways, but also recognizing that that interconnectedness is something that we need to be thinking about as a security and resilience community in a new way. We've built a foundation to address it, but perhaps we have more to achieve to actually be robust in the kind of environment we find ourselves today. Well, first of all, kudos for the positivity that you're looking at this from a positive light. And I think we can all learn from that and lean towards the positivity of what we can gain from it. And the fact that we really are living in a time that we can be connected in ways that 20 years ago would have been completely impossible to continue work as we are today. So thank you for that perfect share. And I hope everybody can really lean on that one as well. So we see an increased volume of data because more people are working from home. What are we really seeing here? You know, I think we're not just uh, only seeing an increased volume of data, but what we're seeing is the need to prioritize. So when you think about compute and you think about storage and you think about bandwidth and availability, if we build flexibility and security into our technology, it allows us to ebb and flow. I can't tell you, for example, the number of times I've heard people using uh, a variety of devices talk about the fact that they're having to shut off video in order to optimize their audio. And for those of us who have been in this field for a while, we understand that prioritization can shift, right? And, and that is something that is a challenge and an opportunity. It is a challenge because while we're shifting on the fly our technology to real-time prioritize, to optimize the experience that we have as users, yeah. We also need to be aware of whether or not that does anything to the manner in which we've embedded security based on utilization. So when video goes down and audio is optimized, what's happening with the video content? Who can still access? Have we built controls into the technology devices and the applications that sit on top of them to enable the same degree of confidence as we would have had we been watching that video? It's a glaring example today. And we've seen a number of uh, items in the news where those of us in the technology arena are trying. We're doing our best. There are those who would seek to engage in harm who are also doing their best. Of course. And what pointers can you share with our audience around that in terms of staying secure in this type of posture that's really that we're all really facing right now? Uh, I, it's a great question. I think as users, we can begin to think about the third parties that we rely on. And you and I have, have spoken uh, about this for so many years. You know, we, we trust, quite frankly, very few people with our health care. We go and we look up where they went to school and we actually walk in and say, how many of these procedures have, we, have you done? And can you allow me, if you're really like you and I, you go and say, can you allow me to talk to one of your patients or so? And we do that on something as mundane as a contractor doing repair work on our homes. 
Do we actually do that with our technology providers? It's actually a time to remind ourselves that the basics of resilience and investigation and trust need to be addressed in the environment in which we find ourselves, a technology environment, a digital environment. So start to look for indicia. My, my term of art for this year is really indicia of trust. What does that provider share with you? What can they tell you about what I'm doing, for example, and what others are doing? How do you build trust into the foundational hardware of the cloud, which has become the fabric, quite frankly, of most of our businesses as we live today with the COVID-19 environment? Perfect. And that actually segues into my next question for you. So in a lot of our conversations, and I've always enjoyed speaking with you, you've pushed us to think about layered security and what we should do about the context of our cloud platforms. Can you give us some insight to that as well? And I know that you've dealt with this for so long and you certainly are, you know, a voice to be listened to here. I think I think you raise an interesting point and I've been talking about layered security because I think we cannot actually isolate ourselves as experts. The information security community has to be intrinsically linked to the physical security community. And so too, we have to be thinking about behavioral security. Let's talk about in the context of where we find ourselves today, leveraging cloud platforms and communications capabilities. We're all working from home. That's an interesting environment. It might be a little bit different. If you've built your VPN, you can look at folks and say, my VPN is robust. I'm comfortable with that. I may agree, but let me ask another question. If you're a family and someone who is your partner that you live with who's an adult or children who are actually doing home education are sitting around you, or if you're occasionally having someone come in to provide services, people are still doing that. I'll share an anecdote with you. My neighbor actually called me the other day and said, I don't think you should be having your cleaning person coming in. That could be exposing you to risk. And I said, well, I balanced the risk analysis and I've concluded that having him come in and keep a safe distance and using the right kind of cleaning materials is actually adding safety. But thank you for your concern. Well, let's, let's take that another step further. What's sitting on your desk? Who has access to that? Does your partner work for a competitor? Is there confidential information that you need to be aware of? So VPN is fantastic because we are all technologists and we all go right there and say, of course I'm covered. But at this time, it's a glaring example of behavioral security as well as physical security and what's your operating model. So right now, the only human in this house is me. There is another living creature, which has four legs, which is sitting under this desk. And right now he's being remarkably quiet, which I really appreciate. <laughs> but the reality is think about those things. I mean, I actually alerted folks to the fact that I was gonna have the privilege of chatting with you and said, do not interrupt me. Um, and I cannot answer you at this moment, despite the fact that there may be a crisis, here's where you can go. That's behavioral security. Azure hardware systems and infrastructure cannot go three minutes without an answer because I'm having a chat with Shira. But there was an implemented plan. There was a way of thinking and approaching about operational effectiveness and security in the environment today, tomorrow, and quite frankly, I believe for the long range that will become the ubiquitous platform through which we communicate moving forward globally. Those are terrific points, Edna. Thank you for that. And I think that lends itself. And with that amazing example you gave, that really highlights the human factors piece of it. Having the proper plans in place, having a secure digital environment, know who surrounds you, who do you live with? Are you with roommates? Who has access? Can they gain access? And thinking about all the perimeters around your security and locking that down or and having a proper plan in place. So thank you very much for those tips. I think they're very well taken and I think that will help our community a lot. And I, as always, thank you so much for your time, Edna. It was a pleasure speaking with you and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. My privilege, stay safe, keep using the technology. Thank you.